Hello, my name is Paul Dixon. I'm a Norwich tourist guide and I offer a range of tours in Norwich and the Norfolk Broads. One of the tours I developed last year I call Shard Lakes Norwich and that is named after Matthew Shardlake, the star of the novel Tombland, written by C.J. Sansom and published towards the end of 2018. Tombland is set at the time of Ket's Rebellion in 1549 and Shardlake gets embroiled in the rebellion. Well, while he's in Norwich, he stays at the Maid's Head Inn. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story of the Maid's Head, which has been at the heart of the city's history for getting on for 800 years. The first mention of an inn on the site was in 1287, when the then innkeeper, John de Ingham, took a gentleman called Robert the Fowler um, to court, allegedly for stealing goods from him. The inn at that time was called the Myrtle Fish Tavern, which is a, a wonderful name. But in the middle of the 15th century, a new inn was built on the site, and this was called the Maid's Head. The name change was confirmed in one of the Paston letters. John Paston III wrote on the 22nd of November 1472, recommending the Maid's Head as a good place to stable your horse. And the Maid's Head certainly was a good place to stable your horse. It had a very important stables and a livery yard. In the 18th and 19th century, it's recorded as having facilities to look after a hundred horses. Of course, where the stable was now is, um, is, is the car park. Anyway, as we move forward in history, we go into the 16th century and more famous visitors. In 1520, Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon, was entertained at the Maid's Head while she was staying with the prior at the monastery. Also, Cardinal Wolsey came to Norwich around the same time to sort out a dispute between the city and the monastery, and his entire entourage stayed at the Maid's Head. Then we move forward to Ket's Rebellion, 1549, and there are various legends associated with the Maid's Head. First of all, that the Marquis of Northampton, who came to Norwich uh, commanding the first army to try and put paid to Ket, he allegedly had breakfast at the Maid's Head before the disastrous skirmish or battle of Palace Plain, after which he had to turn tail and disappear from Norwich very quickly. After this, the Ket brothers, Robert and William, um, allegedly had their headquarters at the Maid's Head, but in the novel Tombland, C.J. Sansom uh, puts them in the nave of Norwich Cathedral. Then, when the Earl of Warwick comes with a much larger army uh, to finally see off Ket at the Battle of Dussindale, he also supposedly had breakfast at the Maid's Head. Uh, the staff must have wondered what was going on with all the comings and goings. Then we come to the visit of Queen Elizabeth I in 1578. Now she visited Norwich in August 1578 and there is a legend that she stayed at the Maid's Head. In fact, one of the bedrooms in the 15th century part of the hotel is named after her. But I'm very sorry to say that she actually stayed with the bishop. So... How did the room get its name? Well, it's possible, as with Cardinal Wolsey, that her entire entourage may have stayed uh, in, or some of her entourage may have stayed at the Maid's Head. And so the connection with Queen Elizabeth was made. Right at the end of the 16th century, Will Kemp, um, a comedian who worked with Shakespeare and was a bit of a rival of Shakespeare's, did his Nine Days Wonder, Morris dancing, from London to Norwich. Norwich. And after he ended his uh, Nine Days Wonder by jumping over the wall at 
um, St John Madden Market Church, he is thought to have made his way down to the Maid's Head Bar and recovered there, obviously a few draughts of ale. And the Maid's Head Bar would have been very new then, because the bar dates from the late 16th century, as does the Snug. Um, the Snug, is, is nowadays, is used for private dining, but, you know, is drank in by many, many people over the centuries, as was the bar. So then we, we move into the 17th century and uh, the, the Maid's Head is a bit of a royalist um, hangout uh, in, a, in, a, in, in what was very much a round head city. And one of the Paston family had their horses stolen from the Maid's Head by the Roundheads. Then we come to um, an all night drinking session in 1684, when Sir Thomas Burney and Sir Thomas Bedingfeld, um, young men uh, from famous um, Norfolk families, uh, had a very, very long drinking session in the Maid's Head Bar. Too long. Um, it's thought it lasted 12 hours and ended in an enormous argument. Bedingfeld runs out of the Maid's Head's entrance right out onto Wensum Street and was followed by Burney drawing his sword. Unfortunately for Bedingfeld, he was caught by Burney at uh, St Andrew's Church and was run through um, by Burney and died on the spot. Burney was arrested, um, put on trial and found guilty of murder and was hanged in the marketplace. So uh, a sad end for both of them. In the 18th century, the Maid's Head was an important coaching inn. Uh, the Norwich Machine used to depart from uh, from the inn, and uh, this this took around about 12 hours uh, to get to London. Uh, it was called the Norwich Machine because it was quick. Also, the famous diarist Parson Woodford, he regularly came to Norwich and of course in his diary he he often writes about what he eats and drinks and he came to the maid's head several times and and one day in 1791 he'd been at the um, bishop's court at the cathedral and after the court the bishop entertained all the clergy who'd been at the court to lunch and gave them all a half bottle of wine each which was very kind of him. Then we move into the 19th century and towards the end of the 19th century a major change. The, the Maid's Head was bought by a gentleman called Walter Rye. Now Walter Rye was eventually to become Mayor of Norwich in 1908 and he was in fact the last Mayor of Norwich. He was Mayor during the visit of Edward VII and it was after Edward VII's visit that the city was given the honour of having a Lord Mayor. So a good quiz question for you. Who was the last Mayor of Norwich? Walter Rye. Anyway, Walter visited the Maid's Head for many years uh, in the second half of the 19th century. He was a great antiquarian and he wrote many booklets and books about the history of the county. And in 1889 he actually bought the Maid's Head and he did more than buy it. He bought property on tombs, tomb land and extended the Maid's Head onto tomb land. So the Tudor, mock Tudor look at the front of the Maid's Head is all Walter Rye's work. And thanks to him the, the Maid's Head started growing in size. It's thanks to him that we still have the historic courtyard where the restaurant is now, 15th century courtyard, a 15th century fireplace in the yard bar and of course the bar and the snug. Today the Maid's Head is very much um, a thriving hotel and obviously looking forward very much to the end of the lockdown and life um, starting up again and welcoming visitors. And in recent years the the owners of the Maid's Head, the Chaplin family, have invested 
um, more than £2 million in refurbishing the hotel and ensuring this old, wonderful establishment uh, has the facilities to welcome 21st century visitors.